Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at GermanPod101.com. In this series, you'll master German pronunciation. Proper pronunciation is essential in German, and in this series, you'll learn it in a fast, comprehensive, and easy way. In this first lesson, you'll learn about the building blocks of the German pronunciation system that will help you in future lessons. The letters used in German are the same as the letters you use in English, with the exception of one new letter and some letters with two dots over them. But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of German, and here they are. There are 28 consonant sounds and 17 vowel sounds. You can form every single word in German by using these sounds. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? Of the 28 consonant sounds in German, you already know 20 of them. That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You can also ignore seven of the vowel sounds for the same reason. The only thing standing between you and perfect German pronunciation are eight new consonant and 10 new vowel sounds. You can handle that. Now let me introduce Alisa, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Hallo, ich bin Alisa. Alisa will be giving you native pronunciation examples to imitate. But for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of German. Nicht, Apfel, Rost, Rübe, Schmarrn, Zahl, Kuchen, Bearbeiten, Füllt, Über, Fuß, Seele, Öl, Aber, Hölle, Ober, Wasser, Bahn. In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes German learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of German. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your German sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer, you will be understood, and this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in German. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on. And for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. These are common mistakes that students of German tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Number one, pronouncing German words with an English accent. English and German have many words in common, so the tendency is to pronounce them as you would pronounce them in English. Compare a few English words with their German derivatives. Pretzel. Brezel, Bagel, Bagel, Cobalt, Cobalt, Autobahn, Autobahn. The difference is quite obvious. Be sure to always pronounce words using German consonant and vowel sounds when speaking German. Get out of the habit of pronouncing these words as you would in English. While it may feel unnatural to say these words in a different manner than what you're used to, realize that it actually sounds more natural to native German listeners. Number two, under-enunciating vowels and final syllables. While both English and German have vowel reductions of some sort, English is much more lax than German. This means that many English speakers tend to under-enunciate vowels. The same applies to final syllables as well. Take, for example, Ich habe mir heute ein Stück Kuchen gegönnt. Learners of German would often be unclear in these problem areas. The problem gets worse when an indirect or direct object is involved, as this makes it even more difficult for a listener to understand what it is exactly you're trying to say. In meinem Auto habe ich eine Spinne entdeckt. Ich habe mir einen Koffer gekauft. As you can see, both markers for the indirect and the direct object are quite similar. If you do not enunciate the endings clearly, you'll be difficult to understand. Number three, using the wrong intonation. Students of German often use the incorrect pitch when saying a complete sentence or question. When you connect phrases leading up to a complete sentence, the endings of each phrase should rise in pitch. It's only at the final phrase of the sentence that the pitch falls if it's a statement. Take a look at this example. Marie macht das Fenster zu, 
Denn ihr ist kalt. Notice how the pitch rises at the end of the first clause and falls at the end of the sentence? Würden Sie mir verraten, wie ich zum Bahnhof komme? Once again, the pitch rises at the end of the first clause, but this time the pitch also rises at the end since it's a question. Number four, mispronouncing the German R. Rrr. English speakers typically associate all R-like sounds with some manner of articulation using the tip of the tongue and somewhere in the front part of the mouth. The German R, however, actually comes from the throat using the back of the mouth. Listen to a few examples which use this letter. Rost, Rast, Rutsch. We'll take an in-depth look at pronouncing German R sounds in lesson six. Number five, mispronouncing consonant combinations with the letter S. When combined with other consonants in German, the letter S typically changes to a sh sound. When S is paired with an H, show, schare, ware. When S is paired with CH, check, komisch, fish. When S is paired before a P at the beginning of a word or the first syllable, spiel, sprechen. When S is paired before a T at the beginning of a word or the first syllable, Stadt, studieren. As you can see, there are many instances in which the letter S changes to a SH sound. We'll cover more of this in lesson eight. Now you know the top five German pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make these same mistakes. Still feel a bit worried? Over the rest of this series, we'll cover all of these topics in depth. In this lesson, you'll learn all 17 German vowel sounds. A, A, O, Ö, E, Ö, Ä, Ä, E, I, Ü, I, Ü, O, O, U, U. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in German. Some vowels may be hard for you to distinguish, especially for English speakers, so make sure you listen carefully. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel is A, Maximal, Wasser, Dach. It's very similar to the A sound in the word pat, though not as whiny. Try moving your tongue further back into the mouth so that it assumes a more centralized position. It should sound a little deeper as a result, and instead of a whiny sound, it now has a darker quality to it. The resulting vowel should sound somewhere in between the A sounds of the words pat and bra. Listen to Elisa. A, 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 A. The next vowel is A, Bahn, Saal, Vater. This is identical to the previous sound, except it's held for twice as long. A, A, A. A. The next vowel is O, oder, aber, oba. This is identical to the previous sound, except that the tongue is raised a tiny bit higher. The sound typically occurs at the end of a word and is pronounced softly. O, O. O, O. The next vowel is Ö, Hölle, Göttlich, Erörtern. This sounds roughly like the U in the word hurt. To pronounce the sound, however, try saying the E sound in the word red while rounding your lips. Ö, 
Ö. 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 The next vowel is E. Seele. Mehr. Beet. This sounds a little bit like the double E in the word feet, except your tongue is not as high. Try to relax your jaw and say it as if to allow the vowel to spill out. Listen to Elisa. E. 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 The next vowel is. Ö, öde, hören, schön. This is identical to the previous sound, except that the lips are rounded. Try to say the word play while rounding your lips. Ö, ö, ö. Ö. The next vowel is ä, hätte, männer, bett. It's identical to the e sound in the word red. ä, ä, ä. Ä. The next vowel is ä, wähle, spät, länge. This is identical to the previous sound, except that it's pronounced twice as long. Ä, ä. 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 The next vowel is E. Halte. Behalten. Gesund. It's identical to the E sound at the end of the word problem. E. 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 The next vowel is E, viel, Bibel, ziel. It's identical to the double E sound in the word see. E, 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 E. The next vowel is ü, über, mükene, rübe. It's identical to the previous sound, except that the lips are rounded. Try saying the word C while rounding your lips. Ü, ü. Ü, ü. The next vowel is i, bitte, willig, bist. It's identical to the i sound in the word it. I, i. I. E. The next vowel is Ü. Füllt. Rhythmus. Schützen. It's identical to the previous sound, except that the lips are rounded. Try saying the word it while rounding your lips. Ü. 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 
The next vowel is O voll kommen Ort. It's identical to the OU sound in the word ought. O O O O The next vowel is O Oda Boat Moth This is very similar to the previous sound, except your tongue is positioned a little bit higher. It's quite similar to the O sound in the word O, though be careful not to carry over the W sound too much. Listen to Elisa. O O O O The next vowel is U Fuß Blume Hut it's identical to the double O sound in the word boot. U, 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 U. And the last vowel is U. Schutz, Kurz, Putz. It's identical to the double O sound in the word took. U. 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 Well done. You've just learned all 17 vowels in German. A. A. O. Ö. E, Ö, Ä, Ä, E, I, Ü, I, Ü, O, O, U, U. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of German pronunciation. German uses the exact same letters as English. It also uses one extra character and has unique markers which look like two dots appearing over some vowels. But let's try not to focus and rely on the German letters too much. Let's focus on the sounds. There are a total of 28 consonant sounds and 17 vowel sounds in German. The good news is that most of these sounds are identical to English. A, E, I, O, U. As you heard, these vowels don't sound that different from English. One thing to note though is that German vowels are pronounced much more clearly than English. We also have more vowel sounds than English. So that's why it's very important that we pronounce them clearly. Unlike English, we try to maintain a constant pitch from start to finish without tapering off. A, E, I, O, U. Some vowel sounds will be unfamiliar to you. Some vowels such as A, O and U can have two dots over them. We call these dots Umlaute. They indicate a change in the original pronunciation of the vowel. Compare the following pairs of vowels. A, Ä, O, Ö, U, Ü. The vowels with the two dots over them are essentially a combination between the vowel and the E sound. Sometimes they're represented as AE, OE, or UE. Now let's take a look at German consonants. Like vowels, German consonants are predominantly similar to English. B, D, F. Other consonant sounds, however, may be a little more challenging. Rost, Rübe, Schmang. These are the sounds that you need to focus on perfecting. Okay, let's move on. 
Some consonants in German aren't actually pronounced as they look to an English speaker. Let's take a look at some of these letters. The German V isn't pronounced like an English V, but as an F sound. So both V and F in German are pronounced as an F sound. Vogel, Fett. The German W, on the other hand, is pronounced like a V sound. Wasser, Wagen. German is also notorious for its Ich and Ach sounds. The German CH isn't pronounced like the CH in church. Ich, Licht, Recht. It could also be pronounced another way. Bach, Dach, Noch. The former is pronounced closer to the front of the mouth, while the latter is pronounced at the back of the mouth. Next is the SCH. This one is actually pronounced like the SH in sheet. Schmal, schnell, schlaf. Now that you have gained a better understanding of German sounds, let's take a closer look at some common mistakes and how to fix them. We mentioned before that English speakers do not maintain the pitch of the vowel throughout. This often occurs because English speakers tend to glide on the vowel, needlessly adding a Y sound as they prolong the vowel. When pronouncing German vowels, try to maintain the same pitch throughout the vowel. Bad, Nebel, Igel, Ohr, U-Boot, Bär, Blöd, Über. Another challenging sound is the German guttural R sound. Rund, Rast. You want to produce the sound at the back of your throat, as if you're gargling water. Try it. R well done! In this lesson, you were introduced to German pronunciation. You learned that English and German share a lot of similar consonant and vowel sounds. You also learned that German vowels are pronounced evenly throughout. And in this lesson, you were introduced to some unfamiliar German sounds and the common mistakes that learners make. The question for this lesson is, what is the difference between Entschuldigung, Entschuldigen Sie, and Entschuldige? Let's start from the beginning. The verb entschuldigen can be literally translated as to take away the guilt, with die Schuld meaning the guilt. This means you're asking the other person to free you from feeling guilty for whatever you're apologizing for. Both Entschuldigung and Entschuldigen Sie, which are formal, and Entschuldige, which is informal, are used to apologize to someone. Entschuldigen Sie und Entschuldige are the imperative of Entschuldigen, which means to excuse, and Entschuldigung means apology. While both expressions can often be used interchangeably, a conversation between a parent and their child might go like this. Entschuldige dich, apologize, to which the child will reply Entschuldigung, meaning apology, or more naturally in English, sorry. Entschuldigung can often stand on its own as an apology. But Entschuldigen Sie or Entschuldige often need another sentence to explain what you're apologizing for, such as Entschuldigen Sie, dass ich zu spät war, which means excuse me being late, or Entschuldigen Sie die Störung, meaning excuse the disruption. Entschuldigen Sie is formal, so this would be used at work. For example, when a colleague disrupts a meeting or, very politely, simply before asking a colleague a question. Another common phrase is Entschuldigung, das wollte ich nicht, meaning apologies, I didn't want that to happen. This can be used in many situations and the das wollte ich nicht implies that whatever you did was an accident. This phrase can be used for anything from apologizing for dropping a plate at home to apologizing to your boss for breaking your computer at work. It's usually used when your mistake was noticed by another person and that person makes you aware of what you did. Another example is er ist entschuldigt, which directly translates as he's excused. This is commonly only at school when parents write a note for their children when they are sick. Their absence is then called an entschuldigt. In casual situations, for example, if a friend is a few minutes late, many people would just shorten this phrase by saying Entschuldigung. For example, Entschuldigung, ich stand im Stau. Which means, sorry, I was caught in traffic. Increasingly, people also 
say just sorry in very casual or friendly situations. The top hardest words to pronounce in German. Let's do this. Ähnlich, similar. Ich sehe meinem Bruder ähnlich. I look similar to my brother. Ä is the A umlaut in CH, which you kind of pronounce here. And H, it's kind of a, I always explain it as a snake, like H. So, ähnlich. Eichhörnchen, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah, this one is very hard because there's a lot of H and then Ö. Ich finde Eichhörnchen sehr süß. I think squirrels are very cute. So Eichhörnchen. Hörnchen is the cute form of horns. So if you refer to something kind of cute and little, you always add a Chen. Etikettierung. Labeling. Etikett is um, the label. And Etikettierung is if you are labeling something. Mein Schulranzen hatte eine Etikettierung. My school bag had a label with my name on it. Hose, Pants, die Hose. Ich habe heute eine Jeanshose an. Today I'm wearing jeans. Streichholz, Schachtel. Matchbox. It's die Streichholzschachtel. So Streichholzschachtel consists of three different words. Streichen, Streich means rub. Holz is wood. Schachtel is box. Um Feuer anzuzünden, brauche ich eine Streichholzschachtel. To make a fire, I need a matchbox. Über, over. Ich finde mich übercool. <laughs> I think I am super cool. Ich springe über den Zaun. I jump over the fence. So über can be used as in over a fence, like über den Zaun, but also I am über cool. I am, like I'm super cool. Überwachung. Monitoring. Die Überwachung. You really have to watch something very closely or so Überwachung. Gefängnisse benötigen Überwachung. Uh, jails need monitoring. Umweltverschmutzung. Pollution. Die Umweltverschmutzung. Umwelt means environment and Verschmutzung means Dirt or dirtiness and um, heutzutage sollte sich jeder Gedanken machen über Umweltverschmutzung. Nowadays, I think it's very important that everybody should think of pollution. You don't pronounce every single letter, so it's Umweltverschmutzung and but the that's why it's hard to pronounce. Wettbewerbsfähig, competitive. Fähig is something you add to a lot of things if you are capable of doing it. This one is hard as well because the HI is not very common. Fähig. Der Arbeitsmarkt ist sehr wettbewerbsfähig. The work world <laughs> is very competitive. Zuhören. Listen. Ich hoffe, ihr hört mir zu. I hope you're listening. Now, usually the Ö is pronounced very clearly, like Ö, Öl, oil. But in this case, since the I, uh, the H is before and the R after, it's kind of like Zuhören. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at GermanPod101.com. Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, 
Make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. Ένα άντρα και μια γυναίκα μιλάνε. Ποιο ρόλο κοιτάζουν και τι ώρα είναι. Ξέρεις τι ώρα είναι? Λυπάμαι. Ξέχασα το ρολόι μου σήμερα. Μάλιστα. Ανησυχώ για το αν θα μπορέσουμε να προλάβουμε το τρένο. Α, υπάρχει ένα ρολόι στην είσοδο του σταθμού. Ωραία. Όχι, όχι. Το τρένο έρχεται σε πέντε λεπτά. Αυτό είναι το τρένο των δέκα. Σωστά. Ναι. Καλύτερα να βιαστούμε. Ποιο ρολόι κοιτάζουν και τι ώρα είναι... Ένα άντρα και μια γυναίκα μιλάνε. Ποιο ρόλο κοιτάζουν και τι ώρα είναι. Ξέρει τι ώρα είναι. Λυπάμαι. Ξέχασα το ρολόι μου σήμερα. Μάλιστα. Ανησυχώ για το αν θα μπορέσουμε να προλάβουμε το τρένο. Α, υπάρχει ένα ρολόι στην είσοδο του σταθμού. Ωραία. Όχι, όχι. Το τρένο έρχεται σε πέντε λεπτά. Αυτό είναι το τρένο των δέκα. Σωστά. Ναι. Καλύτερα να βιαστούμε. Well, hello, my name is Elisa. Welcome to the top hardest words to pronounce in German. Let's do this. Ähnlich, similar. Ich sehe meinem Bruder ähnlich. I look similar to my brother. Ä is the A-umlaut in CH, which you kind of pronounce here. And it's kind of a, I always explain it as a snake, like so endlich. Eichhörnchen, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah, this one is very hard because there's a lot of and then ö. Ich finde Eichhörnchen sehr süß. I think squirrels are very cute. So Eichhörnchen. Hörnchen is the cute form of horns. So if you refer to something kind of cute and little, you always add a chen. Etikettierung, labeling. Etikett is um, the label and etikettierung is if you are labeling something. Mein Schulranzen hatte eine Etikettierung. My school bag had a label with my name on it. Hose, pants, die Hose. Ich habe heute eine Jeanshose an. Today I'm wearing jeans. Streichholz, Schachtel, Matchbox. It's die Streichholz, Schachtel. So Streichholz, Schachtel consists of three different words. Streichen, Streich means rub, Holz is wood, Schachtel is box. Um Feuer anzuzünden, brauche ich eine Streichholzschachtel. To make a fire, I need a matchbox. Über, over. Ich finde mich über cool. <laughs> I think I am super cool. Ich springe über den Zaun. I jump over the fence. So über can be used 
as an over offense, like über den Zaun, but also I am über cool. Uh, um, like I'm super cool. Überwachung. Monitoring. Die Überwachung. You really have to watch something very closely or so Überwachung. Gefängnisse benötigen Überwachung. Uh, jails need monitoring. Umweltverschmutzung, pollution, die Umweltverschmutzung. Umwelt means environment and Verschmutzung means dirt or dirtiness. And, um, heutzutage sollte sich jeder Gedanken machen über Umweltverschmutzung. Nowadays, I think it's very important that everybody should think of pollution. You don't pronounce every single letter, so it's Umweltverschmutzung and but the that's why it's hard to pronounce. Wettbewerbsfähig, competitive. Fähig is something you add to a lot of things if you are capable of doing it. This one is hard as well because the HI is not very common. Fähig. Der Arbeitsmarkt ist sehr wettbewerbsfähig. The work world <laughs> is very competitive. Zuhören, listen. Ich hoffe, ihr hört mir zu. I hope you're listening now. Usually the Ö is pronounced very clearly, like Ö, Öl, oil. But in this case, since the I, uh, the H is before and the R after, it's kind of like Zuhören. Thank you for watching the top 10 hardest words to pronounce. What was your hardest word? Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at GermanPod101.com. Hi, it's Lisa. Welcome to the top 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Let's begin. Außer Deutsch kann ich auch ein paar andere Sprachen sprechen. Apart from knowing German, I can speak a few other languages as well. Außer Deutsch kann ich auch ein paar andere Sprachen sprechen. Apart from knowing German, I can speak a few other languages as well. I'm curious to know what other languages you can speak or you're actually learning besides from German. Danke, aber ich bin eigentlich kein Muttersprachler. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. Danke, aber ich bin eigentlich kein Muttersprachler. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. That is an answer if somebody um, thinks you're actually German or you talk like a German native speaker. So that's a big compliment, I think. Deutsch macht Spaß und ist einfach zu lernen. German is fun and easy to learn. Deutsch macht Spaß und ist einfach zu lernen. German is fun and easy to learn. Of course, that's something I would love to hear. If something is fun, it gets easy. So if you're enjoying German, I think you're being in a good mood and then it gets easy because you're actually wanting to learn. Ich habe alles genau verstanden, was du gesagt hast. I completely understood everything you said. Ich habe alles genau verstanden, was du gesagt hast. I completely understood everything you said. I think that's something really nice if, if somebody's still learning German and um, you talk to them like uh, you're talking to a native speaker and they tell you, wow, I really understood everything. That's something that's a big compliment. But it's also a big compliment for you because it means that you understood everything. Ich habe nur ein Jahr gebraucht, um fließend zu werden. It took me only one year to become fluent. Ich habe nur ein Jahr gebraucht, um fließend zu werden. It took me only one year to become fluent. If you've become fluent in a year, that's amazing. Ich kann deutsche Filme ohne Untertitel gucken. I can watch German movies without subtitles. Ich kann deutsche Filme ohne Untertitel gucken. I can watch German movies without subtitles. I always suggest to watch movies without subtitles because 
Um, even if you don't understand, it's very visual and you can use your imagination. Ich kann rund 50 neue deutsche Wörter pro Tag auswendig lernen. I can memorize around 50 new German words a day. Ich kann rund 50 neue deutsche Wörter pro Tag auswendig lernen. I can memorize around 50 new German words a day. That is amazing. I mean, 50 new German words. Every day learning new German words is going to help you to be, become fluent. Ich lerne ganz alleine Deutsch. I'm learning German all by myself. Ich lerne ganz alleine Deutsch. I'm learning German all by myself. I mean, I think I would be a little sad if you said that to me because I hope you learn with me. But of course, it's a very great thing if you can learn on your own a language and study. Ich lerne seit zehn Jahren Deutsch. I've been learning German for 10 years. Ich lerne seit zehn Jahren Deutsch. I've been learning German for 10 years. Many people give up maybe, but uh, in 10 years you can, you can learn so much um, German. Let me know how long have you been learning German. In drei Jahren werde ich Deutsch wie ein Muttersprachler sprechen. I'll speak German like a native speaker in three years. In drei Jahren werde ich Deutsch wie ein Muttersprachler sprechen. I'll speak German like a native speaker in three years. I always think it's good to set goals and um, because I really think if you work hard for them, you'll make it. So um, what is your goal in learning German? Have you set any goals? Leave me in the comments. Thank you for watching the 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. I hope to see you soon and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, Master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Ein Mann holt die Tochter einer Freundin ab. Wer ist ihre Tochter? Entschuldige die Störung, aber könntest du bitte meine Tochter abholen? Natürlich. Weiß sie, wer ich bin? Ja, sie hat dich auf Fotos gesehen, deshalb sollte sie dich erkennen können. In Ordnung. Wie sieht sie aus? Ihr Haar ist schwarz und lockig. Sie ist schlank und größer als der Durchschnitt. Okay. Sonst noch irgendetwas? Sie sagte, dass sie den Hut tragen wird, den ich ihr gegeben hatte. Er ist weiß und hat eine schwarze Schleife. Sie sollte recht leicht zu finden sein. Alles klar, ich werde sie jetzt abholen.
Danke dir. Wer ist Ihre Tochter? Ein Mann holt die Tochter einer Freundin ab. Wer ist Ihre Tochter? Entschuldige die Störung, aber könntest du bitte meine Tochter abholen? Natürlich. Weiß sie, wer ich bin? Ja, sie hat dich auf Fotos gesehen, deshalb sollte sie dich erkennen können. In Ordnung. Wie sieht sie aus? Ihr Haar ist schwarz und lockig. Sie ist schlank und größer als der Durchschnitt. Okay. Sonst noch irgendetwas? Sie sagte, dass sie den Hut tragen wird, den ich ihr gegeben hatte. Er ist weiß und hat eine schwarze Schleife. Sie sollte recht leicht zu finden sein. Alles klar, ich werde sie jetzt abholen. Danke dir. Ein Mann und eine Frau unterhalten sich. Was werden sie als erstes tun? Was möchtest du heute machen? Ich möchte einen Kinofilm sehen. Okay, ich möchte ein Baseballspiel im Fernsehen anschauen. Außerdem möchte ich einkaufen gehen. Das Baseballspiel beginnt um 13 Uhr. Okay, dann lass uns zuerst den Film schauen und danach kannst du dir das Baseballspiel ansehen. In Ordnung. Dann gehen wir abends einkaufen. Was werden Sie als erstes tun? Ein Mann und eine Frau unterhalten sich. Was werden Sie als erstes tun? Was möchtest du heute machen? Ich möchte einen Kinofilm sehen. Okay, ich möchte ein Baseballspiel im Fernsehen anschauen. Außerdem möchte ich einkaufen gehen. Das Baseballspiel beginnt um 13 Uhr. Okay, dann lass uns zuerst den Film schauen und danach kannst du dir das Baseballspiel ansehen. In Ordnung. Dann gehen wir abends einkaufen. Wanna speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. Hello, my name is Elisa. Welcome to 15 favorite words chosen by you. Let's start with the first favorite word. Bitte, please. Bitte, please. Kannst du mir bitte das holen? Can you please bring that to me? My mom tells me a lot. Please, Elisa, today do the laundry. Blume, flower. Blume, flower. That's one of my favorite words too. Meine Lieblingsblume sind Orchideen. My favorite flowers are orchids. Danke, thank you. Danke, dass du heute das für mich gemacht hast. Thank you for doing that today. Du, you. Kannst du heute mit mir einkaufen gehen? Can you go shopping with me today? Freund, friend. Ein guter Freund ist wie Familie. A good friend is like family. Geld, money. Geld macht nicht unbedingt glücklich. Money doesn't necessarily make you happy. Glücklich. Happy. Ich versuche immer glücklich zu sein. Um, I always try to be happy. Mich machen die kleinen Dinge glücklich. Um, the little things in life make me, <laughs> make me happy. Liebe, love. Liebe, love. Ich finde Liebe ist das Wichtigste zum Leben. I think love is the most important thing in life. Oh, peinlich, embarrassing. Peinlich, embarrassing. Um, ich glaube, ich bin oft peinlich, aber es ist mir egal. I think a lot of times I'm embarrassing, but I actually don't care. Platz, place. Mein Lieblingsplatz ist in der Natur und draußen. My favorite place is in nature and being outside. Schadenfreude, malicious joy. Ich finde, ich habe viel Schadenfreude, was sehr gesund ist, finde ich. Um, I think I have a lot of malicious joy, which I think is actually healthy. If you can just laugh at 
things or at everything and even yourself that's one of the most important characteristics schlafen sleep ich liebe schlafen i love to sleep ich schlafe oft vor dem fernseher ein i fall asleep often while watching tv schön beautiful ich liebe wenn das wetter schön ist und die sonne scheint i love it when the weather is beautiful and the sun is shining Süßigkeiten, Candy. Einer meiner Lieblingssüßigkeiten sind Haribo Gummibärchen. One of my favorite candy is Haribo Gummy Bears. Haribo is actually from Bonn, where I'm born, and it means, well, the, the founder is called Hans Riegel, and it's Bonn. So it's H from Hans Riegel, Ribo, Bonn. So Haribo. I think everybody who goes to Bonn or should visit the factory of Haribo, because that's where it's from. Natur, nature. Die Natur hat eine heilende Wirkung. Nature has a healing effect. Thank you for watching the top 15 favorite words chosen by you guys. Tell me what's your favorite word and leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos with me and I hope to see you soon. Bye! Aww. Oh my god, can you cut that though? No. Yes! No. Hello everybody! Welcome to top 15 questions you should know for conversations. My name is Elisa and let's get started. Magst du deutsches Essen? Do you like German food? Magst du deutsches Essen? Do you like German food? Eines meiner Lieblingsspeisen aus Deutschland sind Knödel. One of my favorite German foods is Knödel. It actually is made of potatoes. It's like a potato powder and you um, boil it in water. It's very German, actually. Um, it's called Knödel. Wann ist dein Geburtstag? When is your birthday? Wann ist dein Geburtstag? When is your birthday? Mein Geburtstag ist am 6. Januar. My birthday is on January 6th. It's actually another German holiday. <laughs> so remember my birthday and send me birthday gifts. <laughs> I'm a joke. Warst du schon einmal in Deutschland? Have you been to Germany? Warst du schon einmal in Deutschland? Wenn, falls ihr schon mal in Deutschland wart, um, würde ich das würde ich gerne eure Geschichten hören. Um, if you've ever been to Germany, let me know your stories and leave it in the comments. Was hast du gesagt? What did you say? If you are learning German and you don't understand the German people when they're talking fast, it's, um, yeah, you can say that. Like, what, was hast du gesagt? What did you say? Was ist das? What's this? Was ist das? What's this? If you uh, don't know a word in German or if you see something that you haven't seen before, you usually say, was ist das? What's this? So, uh, was ist das? Um, ja, das ist ein Fernseher. What's this? This is a TV. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> Wie alt bist du? How old are you? Wie alt bist du? How old are you? Wie heißt du? Wie alt bist du? Um, yeah, what's your name? How old are you? And uh, to, if you are trying to get to know someone, and that's a very common question. Wie geht es dir? How are you? Wie geht es dir? How are you? Heute geht es mir blendend. Um, Today I am really great. Uh, wie geht es dir is something that you kind of add to, like, hallo, wie geht es dir, hello, how are you? 
Wie ist dein Name? What's your name? Wie ist dein Name? What's your name? Mein Name ist Alisa. My name is Elisa. So what's your name? Remember that one. And don't forget the name, you know. Wie lange lernst du schon Deutsch? How long have you been studying German? Wie lange lernst du schon Deutsch? How long have you been studying German? Ich würde gerne wissen, wie lange ihr schon Deutsch lernt. Um, yeah, how, I'm curious to know how long have you been studying German? Leave me in the comments. Since I read them. Wie lautet deine Telefonnummer? What's your phone number? Wie lautet deine Telefonnummer? What's your phone number? I think it's important if you're in a country that you don't know and you're new, you're trying to connect and so try to meet as much people as possible, get their phone numbers and meet them again. And so uh, remember this question. Wo arbeitest du? Where do you work? Wo arbeitest du? Where do you work? You know, some people who go maybe for a year to Germany to learn the language, they have a side job that they, um, they're working on. That's a good way too to learn German because every day you'll be speaking in uh, German anyways. So, wo hast du Deutsch gelernt? Where did you learn German? Wo hast du Deutsch gelernt? Where did you learn German? Ja, ich würde gerne wissen, wo ihr Deutsch gelernt habt, entweder in der Schule oder vielleicht bei einer Gastfamilie. Um, yeah, I'm curious to know, where did you learn German? Maybe at a language school or maybe you went to Germany for a few months with a host family. I would love to know, um, of course, besides German pod, where did you learn German? Wo kommst du her? Where are you from? Wo kommst du her? Where are you from? Ich würde ge gerne wissen, woher ihr kommt. Um, yeah, I would love to know where you are from. Wo lebst du? Where do you live? Wo lebst du? Where do you live? Ich würde gerne wissen, falls ihr schon mal Deutschland besucht habt, wo ihr da gelebt habt. Um, I would love to know where you were living in Germany when you visited or If you've been there for a while, where did you live? Was ist deine Lieblingsstadt in Deutschland? What is your favorite city in Germany? Was ist deine Lieblingsstadt in Deutschland? What is your favorite city in Germany? I don't really have a favorite German city because I have a lot in Germany. Like I couldn't say this is the my favorite city. I think a lot are very pretty and special and very different. Thank you for watching the top 15 questions you should know for conversations. Leave in the comments your answers and don't forget to subscribe and see you soon. Bye! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.